Hello everyone. Myself is Jyoti Sinha, your chemistry teacher. And I will discuss structure of atom, chapter 2 of class 11. So, what is atom? Atom is the smallest, as we know that atom is the smallest particle of element. In the, year, in the earlier 19th century, in the earlier 19th century, John Dalton gave his famous atomic theory. So, in, year, in the year of 1808, John Dalton gave his famous atomic theory which explains that an atom is the smallest particle of matter. Afterwards, in 1830, Michael Faraday, Michael Faraday gave the electric nature of matter. According to the Michael Faraday's electric nature of the matter theory, matter is made up of different particles in which positive and negative charges may present. In the year of 1879, William Crookes gave the conduction of electric current through gases. It is the William Crookes who did the first discharge tube experiment and said that there is a conduction current, electric current. Electric current can pass through the gases if the gases is present in the discharge tube is in very, very less, have very, very less density. And in, in 1897 means in the late 19th century, J.J. Thomson gave the properties of cathode ray by his famous discharge, discharge tube experiment or uh, cathode ray experiment and discovered the electrons. Let's start with Dalton's atomic theory. According to the John Dalton, he gave the first atomic theory. According to that, according to the Dalton's atomic theory, an atom is the smallest particle. An atom is the smallest particle of matter. Matter. Smallest means if we uh, going to uh, uh, break the atoms, there is no smaller particle than this atom. Second is an atom can neither be an atom can neither be created neither be created or destroyed or destroyed where where an atoms can neither be created or destroyed in chemical reaction in chemical reaction in chemical reaction an atom can neither be created or destroyed but and the third is an atom of atom of atoms of an element means one element atoms of one element are similar in similar in mass and chemical properties similar in mass and chemical properties fourth one is atoms of different elements atoms of different elements elements have different different mass and chemical properties fifth one is when atoms combine atoms always combine in a fixed ratio by mass atoms always combine in a fixed ratio by mass fixed ratio by mass to form to form a compound so 
atoms always combine in a fixed ratio to form a compound and the relative number and the relative number and type of the atoms are always same in a compound so this is the theory of dalton's atomic uh, according to the dalton this is the atomic theory uh, postulates of atomic theory but the there are some demerits present in this theory as an atom is the smallest particle of matter we know that atom is now the not the smallest particle of atom after the discovery of electron proton and neutron the subatomic particles an atom is not the smallest particle of matter an atom can neither be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction here it is a chemical reaction atom like an atom neither be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction but in nuclear reactions we can create and destroy atom in nuclear reactions nuclear reactions like fission or fusion etc in nuclear reactions we can create or destroy atoms atoms of an element are similar in mass and chemical properties yes atom atoms are always similar in mass and chemical properties but for hydrogen if we consider hydrogen it is its atomic mass and this is atomic number this is atomic number and this is mass number this is atomic number and this is mass number so it it may differ after the discovery of these two are isotopes another example is chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 these two are also 37 these two are also isotopes and these two isotopes have not same masses so atoms of an element an element atoms of hydrogen may differ in their in their masses in their masses but and their physical properties not their chemical properties as we know that in isotopes the chemical properties are same but the physical properties are different here also next one is atoms of different elements have different masses and chemical properties yes different masses have diff different uh, elements have different properties but after the discovery of isobars isobars sometimes atoms of different elements if it is carbon and it is carbon 14 and it is nitrogen 14 then their uh, sorry their uh, atomic number are different but mass number are same so in the case of isobars this theory fails next is atoms always combine in a fixed ratio by mass to form compound yes this uh, this is correct and this is law this confirms the law of this confirms the law of definite proportion that when atoms combine they combine in a fixed ratio by mass but the uh, they are in simple ratio dalton said that they are in simple ratio but sometimes for example c12 h22 o11 the ratios are quite not quite simple so this is the demerits of john's john dalton's atomic now the electric nature of matter given by faraday past electricity to the two electrodes which are placed in placed in electrolyte electrolytes are those substances which are allow electricity to pass through there are two electrodes when electric current is passed through it when electric current is passed through it current is passed through it at the position at the position on the position this is positive negative this is negative this is positive 
this is anode and cathode. This is cathode. When electric current is passed through it, deposition at the cathode and anode, deposition of substance at cathode and at anode was seen by Michael Faraday. And he proposed that these he proposed that these two in this electrolyte this with, by which they are formed are made up of some two types of substances positive as well as negative. From here the next scientist is uh, William Crookes who did his experiment by vacuum tube called cathode tube. In a cathode tube, this is a discharge tube. Discharge tube. There is a vacuum pump. Vacuum pump is connected with it. Vacuum pump is connected with it. And there are two terminals. See, this is positive anode and this is negative cathode is connected to the high volt high volt very high volt electric current this this is the experiment setup setup of William Crook And he proposed that the gas is present in this. Pressure is very small. MMHG. If we consider the vacuum tube like this cathode ray tube or we can say that this is discharge tube. This inner discharge tube very small amount of, of a gas can pass electric current from this terminal to that terminal. This is William Crookes experiment. With the help of this experiment, with the help of this experiment, J.J. Thomson, how J.J. Thomson discovered cathode ray. Just see. Now this experiment is J.J. Thomson's Thomson's discharge tube experiment or we can say that this is cathode cathode ray experiment in this experiment JJ Thompson there is a high volt, 10,000 volt of electric current is passed to different type of gases and at high current and low pressure a streak of light, a streak of light is seen by J.J. Thompson. A streak of light which starts from cathode to anode. This cathode ray this cathode is negatively charged as when electric field is applied to it, when an electric field is applied to it, it when an electric field is applied to it, this is positive and this is negative. Electric field then it deviates, it is negatively charged, so it it moves towards the positive terminal of the electric field and if we place a man magnet here this is the north and this is the south pole of the magnet then these rays attract attracts towards the magnet if a magnet is placed here then these rays are attracted towards that magnet. This shows that there is electrical and magnetic. This, this ray is electromagnetic ray. 
electrical and magnetic deviation in it. If in this in this discharge tube, if a cat if a paddle B or an object is placed in the path of the cathode ray then and a screen is placed over here then a shadow shadow of this is formed at this screen when the gas when cathode ray pass from these rays so these rays are made up of material particles and this material particle is negatively charged particles negatively charged particles if a paddle wheel is placed over here then it has sufficient mass to move that paddle wheel in it so in uh, we can conclude that the properties of cathode ray the properties of cathode properties of cathode ray properties of cathode ray first the cathode ray moves in straight line they move in straight line straight line Second, it they are made up of they are made up of made up of negatively charged particles, charged particles called electrons. the name electron the name electron is given by the scientist stony the name is given by the scientist stony third it they have the rays have they have heating effect heating as they are made up of material particles the due to the movement of these particles there are heat in it effect they have kinetic energy they have kinetic energy they are electromagnetic rays as they deviate deviate in electric as well as magnetic field it's e by m ratio doesn't depends on depends on the gas present in it present in it these are the some properties of uh, cathode ray
metals are heavy metals. Metals may be heavy metal like molybdenum, copper, etc. Tungsten also. We can use tungsten also. Tungsten, molybdenum, copper, etc. When we place these type of metal metal plate in the path of the cathode ray, it produces X-rays. These are the some properties. How E by M ratio is calculated in the discharge tube experiment. Now, this is discharge tube. This is a discharge tube. Your TV screen or we can say that your old TV screen is like this cathode ray tube. Like this cathode ray tube. This is negatively charged in cathode and this is positively charged anode. Positively charged anode and there is a hole present in the cathode. Uh, anode, sorry. So this is connected to the negative charge of electric current and this is positive. This is cathode and this is anode. In this experiment, the cathode ray travels from this anode in a straight line and reaches it at the point B. When an electric field is applied to it, when an electric field is applied to it, it moves towards towards the it deviates from its path and move towards the this ray move towards the positive positive terminal at A. And when a magnetic field is applied to it. When a magnetic field, like this type of magnet is applied to it. This is N and this is S. Then it moves towards the C. Deviate, deviates with the magnetic field and moves towards the C. J.J. Thomson adjusted the magnitude of electric and magnetic field so that the path of the cathode ray is at B. And he knew the potential of the charge which he adjusted. So, according to that experiment, the E by M ratio, electron and mass ratio, is equal to 1.76 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per coulomb per kg or 1.76 into 10 to the power of 8 coulomb per gram. The E by M ratio doesn't depend on the gas present in it. E by M ratio, why the E by M ratio doesn't depend on the gas present in it? If after the discovery of the uh, uh, cha electronic charge and mass, the ratio is, if we consider the mass of the electron, 9.1, 9 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg and sorry, charge of the electron. Charge of the electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb and mass is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. Then 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 11 coulomb per kg will be found. Any of the gas, gas present in the discharge tube, if the gas is hydrogen gas, if the gas is oxygen gas, if the gas is any other gas, if the gas is a sodium vapor, then the electron present in it doesn't change. Because if hydrogen loses one electron, it has one electron plus proton, plus one proton or we can say that 
cation, one anion and one cation. Whatever the cation it is, it doesn't matter. But if it loses one electron, the number of electron may change. But the magnitude of this charge doesn't change by changing any of the gas. But if we consider cation, if we consider the cation formed by these materials, then the cation is different for different gases. So the nature of the anode depends on the gas, but the nature of the cathode doesn't depend on the, the nature of the elect, uh, cathode ray doesn't depend on the gas present in it. So the E by M ratio doesn't depend on the gas in it, present in it. The color of the gas is different for different gases, but the magnitude of E by M ratio is fixed. It is 1.76 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per kg. Now, let's consider the next uh, material particle that is discovery of discovery of anode ray. Anode ray. In the discharge tube with the discovery of cathode ray, anode ray is also formed. In the discharge tube experiment with the cathode ray, anode ray is also formed. But the scientist can't see that due to its heaviness. The anode, anode ray is heavier than that of anode ray is heavier than that of or very much heavier than that of cathode ray. As look at this. This is anode, this is cathode. If this is cathode and this is anode. In this cathode, if we make some holes, the anode, the rays moves from the, if we, uh, ten, at 10,000 volt and in the discharge tube, as you know that there is a vacuum pump and very low pressure, anode ray move towards the cathode like this. This is cathode. In the anode, as you know, the anode ray moves towards the cat cathode and it moves by the in by, by the perforated cathode. And if we place or if we there is a coating of zinc sulfide. If we coat this surface by zinc sulfide, this surface now starts glowing due to movement of this anode rays from the perforated cathode. This is perforated cathode. As you know that uh, cathode ray, in anode ray, uh, uh, why anode ray is called, sometimes anode ray is called canal ray. Why it is called canal ray? Because it moves from the perforated cathode. A canal is formed, a canal present in the cathode, it moves towards the uh, cathode with this canal. 